Welcome back to the watch list. Time to talk oil, earnings, some of the big names to watch. We've seen so much consolidation in the industry as well. Catherine Alexa is with us, equity analyst energy at Morningstar. And Jonathan Hanshu is with us, equity analyst at CFRA. Thank you both for being here. Catherine, I'll start with you. Um, Schlumberger, we're watching uh, those numbers to come out later in the week. Something that stands out to you for this big name? Um, I really liked how SLB has maintained a focus on pivoting a bit more to digital solutions. These tend to be higher margin um, offerings for SLB. And just because the industry tends to be so asset intensive, I think that these you know, more software focused products from SLB provide a higher margin service for them, which will kind of help them reduce some of their cyclicality in what's an inherently cyclical end market. Um, and then we'll also help them maintain a higher level of profitability moving forward. Um, these also have been seeing like a pretty solid end, demand, end market demand um, from a lot of their customers. There's been really strong product adoption. Um, so we've been really excited to see them continue to invest in their digital solutions and their software offerings and expect that that will continue to see strong uptake moving forward. All right, um, and I believe you have a $56 target, so that shows a little bit of upside potential there. Jonathan, what about some of the mm -hmm. other names that we could be watching this week? Halliburton, Baker Hughes, are those names you like, and are, what are you watching for there? Yeah, so uh, one name we are keeping an eye out on is uh, Baker Hughes. Um, they have seen significant improvement on the supply chain side. Um, you know, after the pandemic, they uh, continued to experience uh, uh, you know, some some time where they uh, had the supply chain uh, disruption uh, impact their ability to convert their backlog with respect to their uh, integrated technologies uh, segment. So um, we think that they could, you know, see significant growth coming into uh, this week's uh, earnings report. Um, you know, last quarter they saw a significant increase in their order book and we're able to convert uh, a good portion of its backlog. And we expect that trend to continue moving forward into 2024. Hmm. So that being said, and I see you have a, a buy on Baker Hughes and Schlumberger and a hold on Halliburton. So that being said, let's I talk guess, more about the, yeah, I wanted to talk a little bit about the pricing on uh, oil, nat gas. Catherine, what's on your mind there? Yeah, I think for both Schlumberger and Halliburton, as well as Baker Hughes, I think that, you know, they're going to be exposed to changes in oil and gas prices. It's just part of the business. Um, but overall, I mean, we tend to take a much longer term view on the space. And these are three of the biggest players in oil field services. You know, even as prices fluctuate over time, there's still going to be demand for oil field services as long as we are drilling for oil. Um, so for SLB, that is why we do kind of like their heavier exposure to non-North American markets. About 80% of their overall business is in that international space, which tends to be a bit less reactive to changes in pricing compared to North America. Um, whereas Halliburton tends to be a bit more 50-50. They have a much larger North American exposure, so they are going to be more exposed to those fluctuations over time. That space tends to be much more reactive. Um, but overall, I mean, again, it's just part of the industry. It's, it's you know, there even if there is going to be some kind of price reduction and then their customers sort of reduce their investment commensurately, we expect it will rebound over time. And so with what's going on here, Jonathan, I, you know, I sort of want these wow moments of what could be happening. I mean, I'm sure you're setting up for all kinds of scenarios, but obviously we've had um, drought in, in the in the Panama Canal. We have what's going on in the Red Sea. Um, you have all kinds of geopolitical tensions. What does this mean for all of these types of energy companies that are already seeing some buyouts, mergers and acquisitions? Do you have any ideas or takeover targets or things like that or more things that you may see? Um, yeah, so I think, you know, more, you know, takeover or any sort of merger acquisition is most likely going to be tied to, um, you know, the upstream space, not so much, um, you know, with oil field services and drillings, mm -hmm. you know, it's definitely something that's not on our radar right now. 
um, you know, we wouldn't be surprised if we see more producers, um, you know, either merging or acquiring, you know, smaller player, um, most likely in, you know, the shale regions of, um, you know, the Appalachian um, or uh, in the Permian. But, you know, with, with respect to oil field services and drillers, it's definitely not on your radar. Catherine, final thought. I'll give you the last word. Uh, I, again, would just keep in mind that it does tend to be a cyclical industry. There's going to be periods of, you know, low activity, but it will usually rebound over time. Um, the offshore space is going to be really strong uh, in terms of investment over the next several years. That will be a huge boost for uh, SLB moving forward and a little bit to Halliburton. Um, and, yeah, overall, I mean, as long as people are drilling, there's going to be demand for these firms' business Uh and solutions and you know we overall have a pretty optimistic outlook for them over the next five or so years good to see you both Catherine and jonathan Catherine alexa of morningstar jonathan hanchu of cfra good to see you thanks